Aloha and welcome to Island Connections. I'm Brahim Aude. Year of Ethnic Studies. Um, the um, Hawaii State Legislature in its uh, last session has proclaimed uh, 2010 the Year of Ethnic Studies in Hawaii um, in recognition of the 40th anniversary of Ethnic Studies uh, this year. And uh, so we have uh, three guests with us who will be helping in uh, discussing the importance of ethnic studies and the impact of ethnic studies in Hawaii and as a field of uh, studies as well uh, nationally. Uh, we have uh, Daviana McGregor, Professor of Ethnic Studies at uh, UH Banoa, and Amy Agbayani, she's the Director of Student Equity, Excellence and Diversity also at UH Banoa, and uh, Jonathan Okamura, Professor of Ethnic Studies at UH Banoa. Welcome all. And so uh, here is the 40th anniversary of ethnic studies. Um, I would like to ask you, Amy, uh, because you have been a uh, major supporter for ethnic studies and you have participated. 40 years. Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 so uh, uh, could you give us, uh, you know, uh, in your um, own understanding of the Hawaii situation, uh, the n national situation as well, and your, um, um, you know, influence uh, in terms of um, ethnic uh, diversity, ethnic origins, and so forth, and what uh, impact that did or ha uh, still has ethnic studies on the community, on the university, from your own perspective? It's like a dissertation. Yes. <laughs> so I'll start. <laughs> um, well, uh, 40 years ago, there was w it was really quite exciting. I think it, it was sort of the milieu of the Vietnam and um, and uh, the women's movement, the black studies movement, and and a lot of um, individuals and groups were, were starting to question uh, the direction of, of of their college education and and and, and uh, national policy and and here in Hawaii, I think some of the most exciting things happening uh, really were uh, the emergence of, of little uh, groups, uh, you know, uh, trying to claim a little piece of, of the university or a little piece of scholarship. And definitely I think ethnic studies uh, was one of those groups that got everybody's attention. Um, the slogan, our history, our way, you know, is, was, was, it really hit a chord, I think, with the young, uh, and we were, some people were 40 years younger at that <laughs> time. Uh, so I think that that um, really um, made uh, a lot of established departments actually take notice, but not necessarily support ethnic mm -hmm. studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, Daviana, you've been uh, with ethnic studies since, what, 1972? or 74. 74, yeah. And I remember you were being, uh, you were a director of the ethnic studies program at some point, at one point, right? Yeah, but you started yeah. off as an undergraduate right. student yeah. participating. Yeah. Yeah. I started off as, I started off as a sit-in to yeah. make sure yeah. that the program would yeah. And so you were an undergraduate. Yeah. 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 yeah, at the time I was yeah. an undergraduate. So could you tell us uh, more about uh, your uh, interaction and uh, your work with ethnic studies? Um, well, I, you know, sat in f as a senior w to make sure the program would continue um, because at that time it was after the Vietnam War was beginning to uh, be pulled back and uh, so the state was going into a recession and so they were looking for places to cut and as an innovative program they thought ethnic studies would be an easy one to, to get rid of. And I think everyone was surprised because ethnic studies drew the support from the community, from the students, um, um, some of the faculty. And it really hit a chord with the alumni, especially who were in the legislature and who were in labor unions. And they, you know, used their influence also to convince the university that this was an important uh, uh, part of the university curriculum and needed to be included in the curriculum. And I remember we sat in and um, the chancellor, uh, Kosaki, you know, stayed overnight so we wouldn't get arrested because mm -hmm. 
it was all local students who were sitting out there and you know they probably knew our parents and alumni. <laughs> 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 but uh, and then uh, after the sit-in, what they what they d d decided was that there would be a, a committee with community faculty and student. Uh, uh, members who would then design the curriculum for the department mm -hmm. and then the department was continued at that point in 74 uh, then there was another effort to get rid of the program again and I think it was 77 or 78 mm -hmm. 77, um, 77. Yeah. and and at that time the demand was to make the, the department uh, make the program permanent and then the next watershed was when we became a department and I don't remember 95, the year 95. Yeah, June 95, yeah. Along yeah. with ethnic studies, um, other programs on campus in the similar boat were, were like Operation yes, Manong. Right, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We were oftentimes a target of budget cuts. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we'd get in word that they needed to cut 1% of the university budget and they cut Operation Manong, the program mm -hmm. I was uh, working with. At the, um, a hundred percent instead of one you know instead of one percent <laughs> <laughs> sort of all over right. we got cut 100 percent wow. and uh, it sort of uh, it sort of politicized mm -hmm. all of us mm -hmm. and said hey mm -hmm. how come us you know mm -hmm. why don't you cut um, t uh, physics mm -hmm. nobody would notice mm -hmm. or math yeah. but they would actually target ethnic studies women's studies operation Manong and then they some some programs didn't last like survival mm -hmm. plus became mm -hmm. survival mm -hmm. minus right. Right. And right. I think new college, new college, new college didn't too. become yeah. an old college. Right, right, <laughs> so yeah. the so some of us actually yeah. um, got more politicized mm. and more connected to the community because we were the target of yeah. budget cuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. and one of the things that uh, why like New College and Survivor Plus didn't last, they didn't have roots in the community, right. although like they have right. student support, etc., but not the roots in the community. That's why ethnic studies was able mm -hmm. uh, to survive. I think uh, in yeah. addition. Um, mm. Uh, and I'd like to acknowledge Deliana, you, you also have to have um, some kind of um, longevity of mm -hmm. and, and a, a person that stays with the program. Mm -hmm. So some of the other programs, they didn't have, mm -hmm. uh, th right. there were mm -hmm. changes of the yeah, people, you know, right. like I was with Operation Manong for 300 years, you <laughs> know, so that's, that helps, you yes. know. Yeah. Uh, if I had actually, someone else who could even be nine, nine times better than me mm -hmm. came on, but they'd have to build up that uh, uh, yeah. knowledge and credibility and relationships. And so someone like Daviana, who's been here since day one, mm -hmm. um, it, it is important for, for to have a face, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and a personal mm -hmm. connection, mm -hmm. uh, not just to the program, but to, to the people right, who are right. running the program. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one other thing in terms of um, ethnic studies, uh, like um, before there was no uh, Hawaiian studies mm -hmm. it's because of mm -hmm. ethnic studies right. uh, women's studies and so on you know mm -hmm. and so that is an important impact that ethnic mm -hmm. studies had uh, on the university community now so you have uh, like school of Hawaiian uh, studies right mm -hmm. um, so that uh, Hawaiian knowledge school mm -hmm. of Hawaiian knowledge itself so that's uh, an interesting a thing and that my uh, current program yeah. called student equity excellence right. and diversity really started with Operation Manong, but then we have expanded mm -hmm. so that we support um, gay and lesbian students mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. old and uh, students with disabilities was, mm -hmm. was already uh, there yes. before Operation mm -hmm. Manong, but I think we have uh, provided more support for it. Yeah, well, um, I want to ask uh, John, um, you know, in terms of uh, your reflections on ethnic studies uh, beyond what uh, we have just mentioned, but also in terms of the research that ethnic studies has been mm -hmm. doing Strong. since day one, you mm -hmm. know, and the impact of that, because yes, we are part in the community and we came out of the social struggles of the community and so on, but uh, also ethnic studies serves the community not only in like support for anti-evictions, etc., but in terms of the research, etc. cetera, if so you could talk mm -hmm. about that. Well, yeah, one could ask, well, what would be the uh, difference if there wasn't an ethnic studies department or faculty uh, doing this sort of research in Hawaii? Initially, a lot of the research was uh, focused on Hawaii, and we subsequently moved beyond Hawaii. But the, the contributions over time uh, through teaching also, but also publications like Davy's book on uh, Hawaiian communities and Noel's book on the economic development of Hawaii, or uh, some of the other things we've done with Filipino-Americans, like Dean Alagado when he came here in the mid-70s, 
Uh, all of these, I, I think, have made uh, very significant contributions to our body of knowledge about uh, ethnic relations and ethnicity And, and they weren't being done by uh, regular departments. No, mm -hmm. and, not to the same extent. And even graduate students weren't really being encouraged to do Hawaii-type research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so you know, if it weren't for ethnic uh, studies faculty conducting this research over time, uh, we would have, I think, a very distorted uh, understanding of what went on in Hawaii from, uh, let's say, even before the 70s when this uh, ethnic studies got started, even the, the history of Hawaii would have mm -hmm. been uh, perhaps from that overall colonialist kind of yeah. perspective that mm -hmm. had been uh, present before. Yeah. Also, like uh, in terms of um, people like Marion Kelly, who had oh, a yeah, yeah. critical, mm -hmm. yeah, critical sure. uh, role to play in ethnic mm -hmm. studies uh, in, in terms of uh, she was uh, working at the uh, Bishop Museum, so had like uh, access to research, etc. So she mm -hmm. helped in terms of the research that uh, hardly anyone else was doing outside ethnic studies, um, and also developed a number of courses. You mm -hmm. know, economic change in Hawaii's people, like ES 350. Now Daviana is teaching this. I taught that before. Uh, 392 um, modern Polynesia and so on and a number of other courses uh, land, uh, yeah. land tenure, land tenure uh, is very important mm -hmm. ES 340 etc mm -hmm. but also I, I still have the research about the bishop estate mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that no one was doing research about the bishop estate in the way that uh, was supposed to be done and so ethnic studies did that research about uh, bishop estate and was very important, in, uh, it played an important role that research in terms of uh, evictions, anti-eviction uh, mm -hmm. struggles and so forth. So that is an interesting, I still have that research. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very, mm -hmm. uh, uh, very good. The um, focus on uh, labor and workers is yes. also terribly mm -hmm. important yeah. because I think uh, there wasn't much done mm -hmm. in the area of unions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they were active, but nobody was, uh, studying them or reflecting right. uh, what uh, their role in, in, in the um, history of Hawaii. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that that kind of perspective, mm -hmm. you know, you have a college of business, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, th they're all doing business yes, and yes. employers yeah. and, 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 yeah. and very little uh, yes. was being done by about um, the, the workers in Hawaii. Right, right. I remember uh, teaching uh, even 101, we would have like, uh, in my class at least, a uh, s uh, big section about labor movement in Hawaii, the development mm -hmm. and so on. In social movements in Hawaii, uh, of course, I would teach about labor unions and so on, bring uh, people from the unions to mm -hmm. talk about labor, etc. So that labor history is very important. So in fact, the notion of our history, our way, begins uh, to take shape uh, by looking at that kind of research that came out. So not only were we um, active in the community, but also like as public intellectuals, if you I I may use the, the term. The yeah. interdisciplinary mm -hmm. and multidisciplinary mm -hmm. right. uh, approach, which is kind of common now, mm -hmm. was not common yes, absolutely. at that time. Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, that was one of the problems with ethnic studies, yes. is like you didn't fit in yes. as a sociology absolutely. professor or a yeah. political science professor. Mm -hmm you were going to have a difficult time right. um, being hired yeah. in any department or eventually getting uh, uh, credentials yeah. and research approved. That's, that's right. Like uh, now all these buzzwords about like service learning, mm -hmm. for instance. Well, we were doing it from before, but we didn't call it service uh, learning. Interdisciplinarity as well. Mm -hmm. um, peer teaching, uh, also the lab leader institution mm -hmm. is very important. So that uh, you create uh, leaders, you know, um, uh, students become leaders and uh, build up confidence and more understanding of uh, the literature that they're supposed to know about Hawaii, etc. Uh, through them teaching, you know, uh, their um, uh, peers, and that is an interesting thing. That all these things came out of ethnic studies and later on became institu institutionalized. Uh, but uh, w so far, we have not uh, been uh, given credit for that. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. Well, but, I you think know. <laughs> the other thing is, when we started, our students were just one generation. I mean, they were just off the plantation. Right. And then now, 
you know, they were the first in their families to be going to college. Mm -hmm. And many of them, their parents had been in the plantation. And even today, you, you know, some of the students who are from the neighbor islands mm -hmm. are still the first ones in yes. their families yeah. who are getting a college education. And for them, I, and for, at least for my students, you know, ethnic studies is the one class that they can relate to that keeps them in college. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them say, I only come to your class because, you know, it's the most meaningful mm -hmm. class. And, and it sort of has carried them through to mm -hmm. continue to mm -hmm. to then go on to other other studies but I think it's, something it's, to relate uh, to yeah you, you use the word relate but it becomes personal you know mm -hmm. history becomes personal mm -hmm. um, public policy becomes personal you know their family's history become history you mm -hmm. know instead of just mm -hmm. my little personal biography all by my little self my little family mm -hmm. is having yeah. this situation but I think they're able to connect Mm -hmm. at a personal level mm -hmm. and that's what really makes it um, sort yeah. of exciting. Right. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. there's a larger issue that we were also dealing with with Operation Monong and Ethnic Studies together in looking at um, hiring faculty who can also re relate to the students you know because mm -hmm. it's so uh, 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 uneven in terms of the, the we have a largely non-white uh, and multi-ethnic student population, but not of the faculty were, mm -hmm. you know, not from from Hawaii even, but from um, America. So that that it and and that also factored into uh, students not being able to relate to the way in which the classes were taught. You know, there wasn't an, an effort to connect. In fact, you know, they, because students didn't speak perfect English, they thought that they couldn't. Uh, they weren't intellectuals, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to speak perfect English to be an intellectual. Ago, so. um, there was severe underrepresentation yes. of yeah. uh, um, Filipino and Hawaiian yes. and other students, mm -hmm. and of course, it was hardly anyone at the faculty level. Right. And so, ethnic studies and Operation Manong were one of the few um, places where um, students actually um, could see someone that actually looked uh, like them. I, I w uh, when I was uh, working with Operation Manong, I mean, more than one Filipino student came up to me and said, wow, <laughs> you know, I, the first Filipino faculty that they had uh -huh. met yeah. in the whole campus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I sometimes tell the story about Helen Nagtalon Miller, mm. who used to give little talks to the public schools, and you know, one kid would come up to you, her and said, what are you, you know, and she says, Filipino, and then the little kid said, oh, I didn't know Filipinos were allowed to teach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard that yeah. said before, too, from yeah. a student, yeah, mm -hmm. the same statement. Right. Uh, it's interesting to me, I mean, talking about uh, Helen and going to uh, high schools and uh, schools to talk, uh, it's interesting to me that in Hawaii, there is no really ethnic studies program, uh, you know, centered uh, and f focus on ethnic studies, etc. In uh, the K through 12 uh, I guess thing, it's yeah, one chapter in yeah. in the yeah. Hawaii right. history yeah. or something, right. yeah. and the community colleges. I don't know how much yeah. curriculum. No, no. So that's really? that's. I mean, uh, it's surprising. So like people don't know anything about um, ethnic studies, etc. They come to the university, and sometimes they are hit with ethnic studies course, like or they stumble into it uh, by chance and then you know vistas are open to them in terms mm -hmm. of knowledge and all that kind yeah. of stuff yeah so it's uh, rather interesting that in hawaii especially we don't have that ethnic studies uh, curriculum in the k through 12 uh, thing so maybe this is something we need to talk about uh, later on i mean you know in mm -hmm. terms of actually uh, i really discussions think it's stuff, important yeah. and particularly the community colleges you know we have a lot of or we want more uh, mm -hmm. community college transfers, yes. and um, they don't have ethnic studies over there. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do. No, no. no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. And so, uh, like right now, uh, a group of us are trying to get Philippine language mm -hmm. taught in every mm -hmm. community college. And uh, this year, we have uh, this semester, we've got for the first time Maui offering oh. Ilocano okay. and uh, Filipino language mm -hmm. and Hilo. Mm -hmm. uh, offering uh, Filipino language. We have something offered at Kapiolani, mm -hmm. Kapiolani but mm -hmm. um, you know, the, 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 in, on some of these campuses, the, the students are 20% of the population, right. Filipinos, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, on yeah. Kauai. Sure. 
Um, you know, Leeward, we're yeah. doing very well, yeah. but mm -hmm. with uh, a Philippine Studies certificate mm -hmm. even, but for these other campuses, a significant number of them don't have any mm -hmm. ethnic studies or mm -hmm. Philippine mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. courses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I. French, though. Yeah. Uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go. Uh, I interviewed the um, uh, Pensri Ho. She teaches at uh, Ethnic Studies. It's a short clip that um, you know her understanding what Ethnic Studies is. So we'll watch that and then okay. discuss. I think that's what's great about ethnic studies as a discipline. It's sort of how they try to work with the community and the community tries to work with academics to make things continually relevant, very applied, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that's what one of the really wonderful things about our department is that it continues that tradition because ethnic studies was founded 40 years ago and yet not all ethnic studies programs in this country continue that community um, relevance in their programs. Some of those departments around the country have become more academic, more ivory tower, more um, not disconnected from the communities that um, were being served during the founding years of um, ethnic studies across the country. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, uh, she's relatively new in the program and she could see that uh, this is uh, happening and uh, w uh, the impact of uh, ethnic studies on the community even now. And as she said, yeah. now we, we call it community service yeah. and it's part of uh, good pedagogy, yeah. you know, yes. yeah. as though uh, these things are um, new. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, they aren't new. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So uh, what I want to do before going to, an, um, uh, to um, look at other interviews I made before is uh, to give uh, some kind of uh, history through uh, photos uh, that mm -hmm. Daviana has. So anytime you're ready, we can okay, watch those on, uh, on it's the screen. It starts with some of the historic struggles. Yeah, and you might want to say. Uh, this, you know, this is the big. 46 strike and then it goes to the anti-war movement and student movement which is part of the founding uh, context for this uh, I think cities the Bachman Hall sit-in anti-war uh, and then this is uh, now some of the anti-eviction struggles Kalama Valley and Kukua Kalama that grew out of that which politicized our generation and then this is actually our ethnic study struggle 19 uh, 74, this is the, the second one, uh, yeah. goes back and forth between, this is our Bachman sit-in in 1974. This guy, Fujimura, is yeah. now Secretary right. Treasurer of oh, uh, W, yeah. Senator now, Brian Taniguchi, uh, John Reinecke, mm -hmm. and who uh, did no study on uh, <coughs> And this was the second um, yeah. effort, 1977. Mm -hmm. That's Derwood Long. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These are men from, um, from Chinatown. Chinatown. These are all the efforts where our students and our faculty worked with uh, the, these various communities in their efforts, uh, welfare residents, yeah. um, the elderly who were being evicted from Chinatown, and we went and helped them to get decent housing mm -hmm. as, a, a, as an alternative rather than evictions to, and, and displacement to mm -hmm. build alternative housing that they was also affordable. Mm -hmm. um, it's and then the eviction movement broadened to, Wai to the farmers in Waiahole and Waikani. These are the fishermen in Mokowea Island. Um, and these are from the different uh, communities. And it's, this is all Waiahole, Waikani. Mm -hmm. And this is Mateyoshi, the la lady of, um, sweet lady of Waiahole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and um, this is still Waiahole, where, where they went to Mrs. Mark's house, the owner who was trying to evict them to bring their protest. And in the Hawaiian community, uh, support for Hawaiian homesteaders is Uncle Sunny Kaniho uh, in Waimea on Hawaii Island, um, trying to make sure that Hawaiian homelands was uh, allotted to Hawaiians. Mokowea fishermen were being evicted from Mokowea Island um, and San Island also and ethnic studies faculty and students g went to give support to them as well. This is on Moloka'i Hualaloa and Koholabe, where, where our students and mm -hmm. continue to, myself, we continue to be involved in Koholabe. These are pictures from the first landing on January, um, in January 1976, mm -hmm. um, when they were picked up 
yeah. and the the movement that grew out of that first landing, <clears throat> so those who continued to get arrested who, and their protests at the um, federal court building, George Helm, who gave his life mm -hmm. for Koholawe, uh, and um, this is all part of the move, the Hawaiian movement that that grew over the time. These are Kupuna from Molokai who went to help in the effort. And on our island, also taking up the issue of the military, Makua Valley, uh, work that Marion Kelly had done on Makua, its history and oral histories there, was very instrumental in uh, court cases challenging uh, military use of the, uh, and destruction of Makua, mm -hmm. winning to access for that and, and more uh, conservation efforts in the valley. This generally uh, that we had opposed H3, that was when we didn't win, but <laughs> there was large <laughs> protest to H3 because yeah. of the impact that it would have. Labor movement support as well, Aqui Makarath, and um, this is, there's Marin Kelly mm -hmm. at Makua. Uh, this is um, Makua Valley, and um, and this is uh, Halaba Valley, mm. when uh, H3 uh, impact. This is in um, Waikileopuna. The mm -hmm. geothermal issue. Mm -hmm. You were active in that. I was active in that, and um, again, native, generally native Hawaiian issues, the, the challenges to native Hawaiian rights and um, the Kamehameha schools, mm -hmm. and the different ali'i trusts, mm -hmm. uh, all issues that we are involved with, and then here on campus, the opposition to the um, University of university, Research, yes, uh, yeah. which um, is uh, our faculty with other faculty yeah. got involved. There was a center. Yeah. These are some of our students involved in service learning on Koholawe planting and um, soil erosion programs and efforts, uh, rebuilding a hale. Uh, these are younger students who came from an island, Ainai and then mm -hmm. Hokulea, yeah. and our service learning in uh, Palolo. Yeah. So that's uh, just like uh, gives us. Uh, an understanding of, uh, or uh, at least familiarity with um, the uh, how uh, ethnic studies is rooted in the community since its inception. Uh, so what I want to do now is go to another interview I did with Monisha Dasgupta, who teaches at ethnic studies and women's studies as well. And uh, it's about two minutes, but um, uh, we can discuss after that. So we'll watch that. Uh, I will speak as a person who migrated from sociology to ethnic studies and you know uh, here this was my first ethnic studies appointment and uh, one, one of the things that I s tell everyone is that this is a very very good home for me uh, and the reason why it is a really good home for me is that I see ethnic studies across the country the project of ethnic studies uh, to be uh, giving us structural analyses that bring in also the voices of those who have been marginalized, written out of history, out of sociology. Um, and it's a very different approach from sociology where you know it would seem like we also do the same thing because we do pay attention to structural uh, issues. Um, we do pay attention to uh, you know, uh, marginalized groups, but in ethnic studies, it's the centering and rewriting of our histories and, you know, the way in which we have to understand society uh, is what is unique. Uh, and in terms of UH Manoa, I think that what we bring to the whole nationally to ethnic studies is our, you know, uh, focus on Asia Pacific. Uh, and our understanding that Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders cannot be collapsed, uh, which is a pervasive uh, uh, misunderstanding um, uh, in ethnic studies departments across um, the, the U.S. continent. And I think that that is the unique perspective that we bring because it is also attached to various kinds of theoretical interventions such as understanding colonization, understanding the ways in which the Pacific has been constructed, Asia has been constructed, and the relationship between imperial U.S. and those uh, regions of the world. Yeah, so uh, that's, I think, a good summation from someone who's been with the program for several years and has developed uh, her research and her community well, activity I'm as well. I'm very impressed yeah. with her 
uh, active participation on a couple of community issues that I personally right. am involved in. Uh, I'm she's regularly with us at the local five mm -hmm. uh, community sort of forums and discussions, and uh, actually marching with the um, local five uh, workers, and also. She's really helped a lot in um, bringing her scholarship and, and knowledge in immigration issues, yes. which is a big deal here yes. in, in our community. Mm -hmm. So I know that the community is very appreciative of her right. um, yeah. participation. Yeah, she, uh, she made uh, quite an impact in just uh, a few years, in fact. What I want to do also is uh, go to an interview with uh, Candice Fujikani from uh, English department. And she talked about her um, relations with ethnic studies and her, uh, the impact of ethnic studies even on her work and uh, you know on the university as a whole. So we do that, and then we can have more discussion. I mean, I know in the English department we really appreciate having cross-listed courses because you know students we get students from you know other majors who come in and you know they can take our class because it actually counts towards their major. And it's nice to have that kind of diversity in the classroom because I have so many ethnic studies students who know the ethnic histories and I have English students, English majors who don't know that history. So then we kind of have a much more kind of fertile environment for that. And so I think bringing the different, um, bringing ethnic studies into, you know, what they call it, uh, what is it, across the curriculum, yeah. yeah, across the curriculum and different, I think that that's really um, important for students to understand that that there are racial, class, and gender dimensions to anything that they're studying. Uh, so I took a class in geography of Hawaii and focused on the Mahele. And to me, that was really interesting. I mean, it was ge geography and, um, say, the history of Hawaiian conceptions of land. Um, so I think that that's kind of what's happening and why it's so important. And in terms of like the future, I'm going to a conference in Riverside on a critical ethnic study. So it's looking at ethnic studies, the important work that it's done. Also, how do we understand ethnic studies in relation to genocide and native peoples? So it's kind of, you know, this question in Hawaii for us is how do we situate ethnic studies in relation to the um, Hawaiian independence movement? Yeah, I mean, so um, it shows like even our students, how they have impact in, uh, in other classes and especially in cross-listed classes. So. Um, is there any discussion you'd like to, to do on that, anyone? Well, I, I think what you see with Candace and um, Cindy Franklin, Laura Lyons, some of the other faculty in English is uh, uh, people have gone well beyond the disciplinary confines <laughs> of uh, English uh, literature. I mean, what they do, the kind of analysis, what they uh, look at in society goes well beyond reading a book <laughs> on uh, Shakespeare or whatever, and uh, it's not surprising they come out of their tradition. Candace and Cindy, for example, at Berkeley, so they're well familiar with the, the political dimensions of, of um, the kinds of literary analyses that mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to go to a student uh, who just graduated from ethnic studies, Julia Luck, and show what, how she thinks about ethnic studies. started out with Dean Alligato's class and that was my first ethnic studies. I took 101 and then the following semester I took your class, the Middle Eastern Studies class, and then I took um, Monisha's class, Race and Gender in the U.S. And it was after that semester, it just really solidified it for me. Um, ethnic studies as a major just became like breathing. It was something that was natural. I understood what was going on in the classes. I wanted to learn more. I was challenged daily by these readings and professors asking me questions about myself, my own identity, and about the social issues going on within our society um, in the continental US and here in Hawaii. And so uh, as my experience progressed in ethnic studies, um, it became a natural process to want to seek more information and to learn more from the professors. And so as I grew in the department, so did my knowledge base. And things here in the department just kind of fit nicely. They, um, you learn one 
one history and it you know oh, like Filipinos in Hawaii or Japanese in Hawaii and they meld and you and they mesh together and you can understand them better because it's building off and so it was a very smooth transition so when I graduated um, it's in my current job I work with kids in Kalihi I'm able to notice um, social problems within my own with the kids that I work with because of this education and so um, things just you know identifying issues within my society become very easy um, interesting about uh, Julia also she um, interned uh, during the summer with local five mm -hmm. so she uh, she really participated in those kinds of struggles etc and now with her uh, work with children's uh, children in uh, Kalihi is also applying a lot of things that uh, she has uh, learned in ethnic studies and in fact we have one other uh, graduate who uh, is an organizer now with Local 5, uh, say hi to uh, Abby, and uh, she's uh, using a lot of what she has learned uh, in ethnic studies in her um, well, actual I work. Ethnic yeah. studies is a kind of major that can help um, people in many, many different kinds of careers. I mm -hmm. mean, even if you're a nurse or a policeman yes, or a lawyer or mm -hmm. a MD, I think you're dealing with, um, you know, various um, issues of um, identity mm -hmm. or culture or mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. or uh, multi, multi ethnic in interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, a major in ethnic studies mm -hmm. it can really be combined with any career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> you have some, uh, like the, the question of uh, why ethnic studies now, some people are saying that when uh, everybody else is doing, uh, you know, ethnic studies in other places, right, you know, in other departments, etc. Why? Is it because you only do it on Hawaii? You know, that w that's one professor was telling me that, uh, who's like, you know, anti-ethnic studies. But the point is that the first thing, like he thinks doing things on Hawaii is like he's belittling um, research on Hawaii on the f in the first place when you say why because you do it on Hawaii. And the other thing, he doesn't know the interaction between ethnic studies and other departments. Look at English like, you know, uh, like Cindy uh, Franklin, uh, Candice, uh, Ruth Chu, Laura Lyons and so forth. They recognize uh, the importance of ethnic studies in their work, and they do ethnic studies stuff, but they see that you need like both. You need doing ethnic studies in English plus ethnic studies and ethnic studies, as, et cetera. So we still have like people who still don't understand what ethnic studies is all about. And that is uh, kind of troubling, uh, especially in, uh, you know, in 2010. Well, you, should be used, <laughs> you should be used to this kind of criticism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, but it's still troubling. I mean, yeah. how people like mm -hmm. that are still alive, you know, intellectually. Yeah, you like know. you don't have to justify having an English department or, or a financial aid office, yeah. but we still have to justify uh, why we have an ethnic studies mm. department or a yeah. women's studies department or even student services for uh, dealing with diversity. You have to... You know, it's it's not like it's it's necessary. It's like nice to have, yeah. but not necessary. Yeah. But I think if you look at this uh, strategic plan of the university, it does say that it should be one of the, our priorities. Absolutely, but uh, the thing is that administrators can't understand this when it comes to budget stuff. <laughs> you know, and this is one thing we have to drum it into them. You know, one way or another, but because it is really critical for. Hawaii and for understanding Hawaii better and for the strategic plan and now there is uh, the beginning of another strategic plan in the making so we got to make sure that ethnic studies is in this strategic plan because otherwise uh, how could you call this thing the University of Hawaii really actually so what I want to do and uh, one of the best replies and responses to all this is uh, you know, what, uh, for instance, Candice said, or Julia Luck, uh, who's, uh, you know, a graduate, recent graduate, and other people like Monisha. So I want to go to uh, another uh, segment of Monisha's uh, interview that uh, we did, and she would uh, talk more about ethnic studies. So we'll watch that and we'll have discussion. What I love about this department, why I flourish in this department, is because we don't make that artificial 
uh, you know, division between, you know, your research and community work. It is organic in this department, or it feels organic to me. And, um, you know, when people say, well, you know, don't you think you're, you're so involved in the community, doesn't it take away from your research? No, that is my research. And, you know, this very uh, uh, dangerous split that we constantly make between activism and the academy, uh, you know, it doesn't work. And I think that ethnic studies understands that, and I don't feel it as intensely in this department, but I have in other spaces. And the, the coming together of activism and research is critical because that is what feeds our research. There is no research without actually going back to people's lived experiences and struggles and you know, developing new frameworks as a result. And, and to be honest about the kinds of struggles that are going on in the, movement, in the various movements. Yeah, that was a, you know, a good response about like, and the relationship between research and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. Well, could you tell us something about uh, your research uh, and activism? I mean, how they mesh together, because you do a lot of stuff all over <laughs> the place. You know what I mean? Right, well, yeah. I was just reflecting on it in preparation for the discussion. I was thinking about that my research actually was utilized and drawn upon heavily in the findings for the apology law that was mm -hmm. drafted. Um, and, and also, again, my research was used in the report that followed on um, from the Justice and Interior Departments on uh, the um, reconciliation process that the United States makes. Again, in the findings sections, which lays out what are the key uh, moments in history and that define the relationship between the U.S., where at one point the U.S. recognized Hawaii as being independent and at another time was invading Hawaii and mm -hmm. continues to occupy Hawaii. Uh, and had colonized it. But my, um, a lot of my research uh, is also with, with colleagues uh, who was the, uh, John Matsoka, who recently, up until recently, was the dean for the School of Social mm -hmm. Work, and uh, Luciana Minerbi mm -hmm. in the School um, Department of Urban and Regional Planning. And together we had worked with several communities uh, from Kau to Puna to um, also Kauai and, and Maui to us and Molokai Island to work with the community to identify their natural and cultural resources and how to best protect those resources from development. Mm -hmm. And we also designed uh, an approach to conducting what we call cultural impact mm -hmm. studies. When communities are threatened with development, how do we work with the community to come together and identify what's important and what what we you know what cannot be destroyed and if it's destroyed it would have an, you know these are resources that are irreplaceable um, and my work in, in the around the geothermal issue um, myself and John Matsuk and, and Luciano went out and did oral histories in the community and we put that together in testimony for their court case um, to um, stop the development of the rainforest at Waukeliopuna mm -hmm. And in the Supreme Court ruling, which was a landmark case acknowledging the access rights of Hawaiians, our, the work that we did with the community, the oral histories were, were drawn upon as evidence that there was continuing uh, cultural practice in Waukeliopuna. Mm -hmm. And ultimately the geothermal issue, um, the geothermal production was stopped there in Waukeli. The, the rainforest was protected. And two years ago, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs together with federal monies and, and um, county monies, were able to purchase the Waukeliopuna mm -hmm. rainforest and protect it uh, for, for in perpetuity. So that work was really, I think, significant for, for the Puna community, and but moreover, generally for Native Hawaiians because mm -hmm. of the landmark decision on, on recognizing Hawaiian access rights. Yeah, so that's actually the role of the um, public intellectual. I mean, your research is for public use, mm -hmm. and uh, you are uh, informing the public and uh, serving the public in this, w in this way. At the same ha time, it's uh, scholarship. Absolutely, right. yeah. And also, uh, it's public policy. I mean, so you have that, and uh, this is uh, critical, I mean, for a university of Hawaii to have uh, some department like this that can do this kind of work that's not being done in many other places, you know. Well, well, well technically, yeah. it's part of the mission of the university, yes. which is teaching, research, and service. Absolutely. But 
unfortunately, uh, oftentimes the service piece is seen as um, not very high priority or right. not credible or not necessary. Right. And so what you have to do is keep reminding everyone yes, yeah. that you really do better when you do all mm -hmm. of these and three things. Yeah, and that's one thing that Monisha has replied to also prior to that, how research and service are connected together. Uh, but Monisha, yes. Monisha, because uh, I'm very impressed by the research that she's been doing. Um, after coming to our department, she finished her book on uh, the South Asian labor and uh, gay and women's organizations. Then now she embarked on a new project on undocumented uh, Latino immigrants in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And then she's going to do a study on uh, Latino immigrants here in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, it's, her work, I think, goes beyond just being a public intellectual to use as a, as a source for talking about uh, these communities. She's an advocate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's clear where she stands on these issues, but she can support her position mm -hmm. by having done this research, by uh, being, getting very close to the people involved in these organizations, mm -hmm. their leaders and members. Uh, mm -hmm. So she um, can speak from a position of authority. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the, them, like you said, people who don't have a voice, who get marginalized. And uh, this is what I, I really appreciate about her contributions to our department right, right. and the time that she's Yeah, been her work, uh, actually, in uh, the interview that we had, th there's other segments, like I was saying that <coughs> her work and the work of others like yours enriches the notion of what public intellectual is, you know, mm -hmm. and that is in terms of advocacy as well. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, I want to go to Cynthia Franklin. I interviewed her, and uh, we do that, and then we discuss, because I'd like to ask you about your own work, John. Mm -hmm. okay. Ethnic studies plays an increasingly crucial role right now when you have you know the kinds of legislation that's passing in Arizona that is seeking to outlaw ethnic studies kind of injunction in conjunction with anti-immigration legislation I just think it becomes ever more important and you know um, the kind of stakes of ethnic studies are really clear I think at this particular moment and I think in terms of what's happening in Hawaii I feel like the kind of hires that you've been making and the kind of work that your department has been doing have been kind of highlighting both these kind of immigration issues but also indigenous issues. And I think it's really important to be able to think those things through together in relationship to U.S. imperialism because I think they're, they're not separate but they're connected. And um, that, I mean, oftentimes immigrants are working at the expense of indigenous peoples, but I think what's happening right now in Arizona also points to ways that those struggles can and should be articulated with one another. And I feel like Hawaii is very well positioned to be doing that kind of work. And that, you know, just also kind of thinking about how race operates in the U.S. is just absolutely crucial. And I see students coming into my classes who have taken ethnic studies classes and they, ha they get that and they have a kind of vocabulary to talk about that and they have you know the kind of political insights and groundings to think about that kind of work and they're often kind of plugged <laughs> into kind of on the ground work as well which I feel like your department has done you know a really good job at fostering um, and kind of making room for grassroots kind of work. Yeah, um, you know, I want to ask you like about uh, your own research um, in uh, the uh, in in this, you know, in terms of ethnic studies. Like you just came out with a book. Uh, when was it? A year ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Uh, you know about uh, ethnicity. So could you say something about that and also about your work in general as regards mm -hmm. to ethnic studies, given your understanding of the ethnic studies, Asian American studies, nationally mm -hmm. as well. Well, like Manisha, I, I see my work as being, uh, in terms of an advocacy, advocacy role, uh, particularly Hawaii, for disadvantaged groups like Hawaiians, Samoans, uh, Filipinos, a group that I started with my own research um, for my dissertation. And the issues in, I address in my book have to do with ethnic inequality, and, and they, they challenge a very dominant perception of Hawaii as a place where people get along with uh, each other especially well in, uh, in these harmonious 
uh, tolerant types of relations. But that obscures the persisting inequality that we find in different areas, employment, education, and the university public education itself being a setting for this uh, perpetuation of inequality. So things like the Friday furloughs, I had no problem addressing that. I said, look, you know, these are things that uh, arise out of the underfunding of a public education here, both at the university and the K-12 levels. And this is how inequalities get perpetuated. They can't, uh, students don't seem to understand, like, well, how is it? On this uh, furlough Fridays, my programs work out in Wainai, Nanakuli, and Waipahu, but like, there were uh, homeless children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who didn't have breakfast or lunch mm -hmm. because of furlough Friday. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're thinking of the yeah, other yeah, stuff, yeah, the yeah, academic yeah. stuff, yeah. but actually we were yeah. dealing with the fact that they didn't have breakfast or lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, uh, I mean, tragic given this affluent society that really doesn't, uh, um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, equality and equity and so forth, there are problems with that. Some people, uh, go to bed hungry, others like they throw food away. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. But what I want to do before we continue with this is go to Ruth Shu, also professor, uh, associate professor of ethnic, uh, of uh, English, you know, and wo how uh, ethnic studies has impacted her work and so forth. In Hawaii, I think in particular, uh, having a department like ethnic studies at the University of, of Hawaii uh, offers a space for uh, different groups in this very um, diverse community to really talk about some of the issues uh, confronting uh, the state, uh, the communities that we have for the future. Uh, so, you know, it's like one of those things where uh, we may have taken it for granted. We don't, you know, necessarily think about the ethnic studies department on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. Uh, but I think if we didn't have ethnic studies and if we don't have ethnic studies, I think we'd feel it right away. There are lots of really crucial issues confronting um, Hawaii and the various communities here uh, and, um, you know, I think it's really important to build bridges across communities to um, decrease and dissolve misunderstandings that may have been created because, you know, there are conflicts of interest among various communities. Um, and also, I think, to kind of look at um, the the shared issues, the shared um, goals going forward uh, among the various communities. And for me, ethnic studies, uh, you know, would be one of the obvious places that could, that could offer that sort of forum. Yeah, I mean, uh, she um, told us uh, something that we all know, but I mean, from her own perspective, given her understanding, of English and ethnic studies and Hawaii and so forth. So um, any comments on that, uh, John? Well, s sometimes you raise these issues in class and you're amazed that students haven't heard about them. Like uh, today I was talking about uh, this proposal in Arizona that would ban the teaching of ethnic studies in high schools there and students hadn't heard about that issue. Right. And they, they, go, they go, why? Why would they do that? And I said, well, it's very much tied into the Arizona law that uh, came down to racial profiling of Latinos. It's targeted again at Latinos. Uh, they saw the ethnic studies courses there as uh, teaching intolerance uh, toward whites. And uh, for whatever reason, students don't necessarily have this kind of perception or perspective that we'd like them to have about what goes on in society that uh, they shouldn't necessarily just assume that what's being taught doesn't have uh, any kind of meaning behind it. And this is the kind of perspective, I believe, a critical perspective that we try to bring to our classes and have students leave with that sort of understanding of what's going on in the society yeah. in which they live. Yeah, I mean, our college, College of Social Sciences, uh, talks, keeps talking about liberal education, liberal education, 
Well, ethnic studies is liberal education. One example is what you just uh, said. I mean, where else would you talk about these kinds of things, really? I, I you think know. ethnic studies um, really has done so much, and and you can see it in the alumni and the graduates that you have, and 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 they're all over the place. Yes. And mm -hmm. you know, they they are in different professions, and and uh, and continue to actually comment on how they have been influenced mm -hmm. by their yeah. classes. Yeah, you were, uh, uh, just before the show started, we were talking about uh, some legislators who were in ethnic studies, who were proud of ethnic studies. So you mentioned Clayton He, for instance. Yeah, I, I'm very um, active, actually, in local politics. And mm -hmm. clearly, some of the people that I, uh, some of the political leaders that I think have a vision and, and are effective, our, our ethnic studies majors, like mm -hmm. Roy Takumi, as mm -hmm. chair of uh, lower education, has had an enormous responsibility and impact. Mm -hmm. uh, Clayton He in, in Native Hawaiian and, um, and agriculture, mm -hmm. I believe, is very uh, influential. Yeah. So you've got lots of uh, yeah, Dwight Takamine in uh, labor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Taniguchi, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's just in the legislature. Right. <laughs> so we have others in labor unions uh, and so on. So it's uh, it's really um, you know I interesting. Uh, I want to go to one more um, clip uh, from Cynthia Franklin talking about her classes and ES class. So. Pretty much every one of my classes I think of as kind of an ethnic studies class because I do work kind of in a comparative framework thinking about the importance of race and racism in terms of how they structure uh, the U.S. And so I, th and I feel like I've learned how to do that from ethnic studies and from ethnic studies faculty members. I had, um, you know, ethnic studies faculty member on my dissertation committee and a lot of my reading came directly out of people who were in, you know, that it, located in ethnic studies programs and departments. Um, so I, and I think it's, it's a good thing in a way that students can get, you know, ethnic studies classes without them being called ethnic studies because really these concerns should be, you know, should carry throughout mm -hmm. the curriculum and, you know, not just be confined to ethnic studies. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I think it should be both and. Yes. and. And I see that, you know, I see ethnic studies having had that kind of impact on how many of us teach our classes. Um, and at the same time, people who do cross list, I think, you know, it's nice to be having that kind of shared um, experience where students are kind of making the connections that faculty are working together and that literature is not a space apart mm -hmm. <laughs> from doing ethnic studies. Yeah, I mean, uh, she summed up uh, a lot of things we were talking about. So um, we have a lot more to talk about. Uh, so the next show in October is going to be about ethnic studies. And uh, so we have like one minute to go. So any um, uh, final comments, Devi, uh, Amy, John? Well, I think ethnic studies uh, is a um, critical part of the University of Hawaii. And, and I'm really, we just have to make sure that that continues yeah. and it remains a priority. Right. I mean, it is as important yeah. for Hawaii. And uh, for us to get um, a graduate program in ethnic studies is very important and work with legislators, et cetera, to deal with ethnic studies from the K through 12 uh, is mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. That's, I think, is critical. Anything else you want to leave us with? Uh? Well, as I said, I think the, the proof of the department is in the leaders that, you know, have gone on. And, mm -hmm. um, we play an important role in educating, you know, the, the generations who are going to be the leaders of right. tomorrow. So right. who we are the we leaders. And <laughs> who, who, are, who ha have become and yeah. will continue to be. So it's an important role that we play. Okay, good. So we are flat out of time. Uh, thank you all for coming and thank you for watching. See you next month also about ethnic studies but we'll have uh, different uh, kind of discussions beyond what we just talked about mahalo nuwiloa see you next month so thank you thanks.